Hi, I'm Danny Allwood and I'm Senior Lecturer in Organic Chemistry here at Sheffield Hallam University. This video is just going to take you through some of the underlying principles of one of the most common techniques you're going to use in an organic chemistry lab, and that's liquid-liquid extraction. So before we get into any techniques, it's useful to have a think about polarity, which is essentially a measure of the type of bonds your molecule has in it. So if your molecule has any ionic bonds in it and is therefore charged, it's likely to be very polar. Similarly, if it's got a lot of highly polarised covalent bonds like OH and NH bonds, that's likely to make it very polar as well. Now we're going to come across a number of examples, both from the laboratory and the household in this video, but one of the ones that appears in both is water. Water is a very polar solvent. On the other hand, if your molecule is made up pr principally of carbon and hydrogen, and there aren't many, many highly polarised bonds in there, then that's likely to make the molecule non-polar. And a household example of this is white spirit, which is essentially a collection of hydrocarbons. So why is this important? Well, if we're going to use solvents, we want something to dissolve in them. So there's a, a rule that like dissolves like. So polar sol solutes tend to dissolve in polar solvents and non-polar solutes tend to dissolve in non-polar solvents. And from the household examples, we know that this is true. So we know that sodium chloride, table salt, uh, dissolves very well in water, uh, but it doesn't dissolve very well in non-polar solvents like white spirit. So if I take some salt here, some sodium chloride, and a bottle of white spirit, if I just tip some in here, you can see it's not dissolving. Okay, it's staying where it is. Whereas if you pour it into the water, it will dissolve. So sodium chloride, because it's highly charged, is a polar molecule and prefers to dissolve in a polar solvent like water. On the other hand, we have cooking oil over here, um, which is a very non-polar molecule. And we know that if we take um, cooking oil and we pour it into water, it will separate out into layers. So if we pour some cooking oil into this bottle of water, you can see that there is a layer of cooking oil now sitting on top of the water. Whereas if we take the cooking oil and pour it into the white spirit, give it a little bit of a mix, you can see that that's now dissolved. So we can use this affinity for various um, phases, whether they're polar or non-polar, to separate compounds out. And that's kind of the point of liquid-liquid extraction. So if we take our white spirit and our water and we actually pour them into the same container. So I'm just going to take the white spirit and the water and pour them together here. Then you should see that they formed two distinct layers with an interface in the middle here. And it's this property of the, these solvents being emissible and having different polarities, which is going to allow us to do some interesting things. So we need to be able to keep track of which layer is which, which is our polar layer and which is our non-polar layer, or which is our aqueous and which is our organic. And we can use the density of the solvents to help us out with that. Now the density of water is one gram per mil. So it depends on what solvent you're putting with it as to whether it floats on top or it sinks underneath the water layer. Now in this case, we've got white spirit, which has a density of 0.79 grams per mil. That is less dense than water, and therefore the white spirit layer floats on top. So the top layer in this case is our non-polar organic layer, and the bottom layer is our water layer. There are some organic solvents that are more dense than water, but most of them are less dense. So when you actually do liquid-liquid extraction in the lab, this is the piece of kit you're going to be using. It's called a separating funnel. And you'll notice that you can pour your two phases in at the top, give them a shake, allow them to separate, and then you can drain the bottom layer out through the tap at the bottom. So I've just got a cartoonized version of this, and I've just swapped the organic phase here for something that you're more likely to come across in the lab, which is ethyl acetate. So what this technique is principally used for is separating compounds out and thereby purifying them. So if you've got a mixture of compounds, and as an example, I've got aniline and sodium bromide here. Uh, if these two compounds are substantially different in terms of polarity, which these ones are, sodium bromide is very polar, so would like to dissolve in water, whereas aniline is reasonably non-polar, so would prefer to dissolve in organic solvent. Just by partitioning them in the separating funnel, you'll actually separate these two compounds out. Now, if you pour out from the separating funnel, right through the, the tap at the bottom, uh, into some beakers, you've then separated these two compounds out. Now, the benefit of using organic solvents here is that many of them are volatile, and ethyl acetate is as well. So what we can do with the organic fraction is we can allow that solvent to evaporate and therefore isolate our pure, nice white powder in this case, um, 
a pure organic compound. Um, if you're thinking that's going to take hours and you're going to have to sit there waiting for this organic solvent to evaporate, uh, we have kit that allows you to do it in a matter of minutes. So you'll be using a rotary evaporator in that case. So we can also do more advanced things with uh, liquid-liquid extraction. And if our molecules are responsive to pH, then we can separate those as well. So in this case, we've got an amine and a carboxylic acid, um, which are ba basic and acidic, respectively. And if these are a mixture of compounds and we, uh, we partition them between water and ethyl acetate, uh, water being at pH 7, then uh, these two compounds will react with each other in an acid-base reaction and we'll end up with uh, a pair of ions, basically. So because these compounds are now ionic, they're charged, they're more polar. So they both prefer to be in the water phase. Now, by manipulating the pH of the water phase, we can push compounds into or out of it. So if we add a base to our water phase, what we're going to do is raise the pH. So the pH will go up from 7 to 8 to 9 and so on, until eventually it reaches a point where it will deprotonate the ammonium that we've got in there and put it back to being an amine again, to being neutral. Because it's neutral, it's gone from being polar to being less polar, and it will then move from the aqueous phase into the organic. And once again, we've separated these two compounds out, and we can evaporate the organic phase to isolate our compound. If we go back to the, uh, the, the original setup here, if we do the opposite, and we add an acid to lower the pH down from 7, eventually there'll be a point where the pH is sufficiently low that it sticks the proton back onto that carboxylate salt and neutralizes it. So we've gone from a polar carboxylate salt to a relatively non-polar carboxylic acid, and then that compound moves into the organic phase. We can then evaporate the solvent and isolate it. So going back to our household example here with water and white spirit, um, I'm going to take some turmeric. And turmeric has got this molecule curcumin in it, which is what gives it its yellow color. Now, if we partition curcumin between white spirit and water, curcumin is a reasonably greasy molecule. It's relatively non-polar, and therefore it prefers to sit in the white spirit layer. And we can see that here. You can see that the top layer, the white spirit, is bright yellow because it's got the curcumin dissolved in it, whereas the water layer is uh, relatively uh, less yellow. Now, if we take household oven cleaner, and you can see here it contains this ingredient, caustic soda, which is an old name for sodium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide is a base. Uh, if we add this oven cleaner to the mixture, then we're going to change the pH of the water phase, and that will allow us to manipulate where this curcumin ends up. So if we add our sodium hydroxide to our water phase, we're going to increase the pH from 7 up to 14, and that's going to deprotonate this curcumin molecule and make it charged. And because it's charged, it will then prefer to be in the more polar solvent, which is water. So it'll move from the organic phase to the aqueous phase. And we can see that here, where the bottom phase, the aqueous phase, is now brightly coloured, and the top phase is comparatively less coloured. So I hope you found the video interesting. Uh, if you've got any questions, please feel free to email me.